menu laws. Um, then we're going to talk about um, uh, nutritional claims and regulated terminology by the FDA. Um, a brief kind of look into UCC Article 2. Uh, and then also um, discuss the food, food code required disclosures and reminders. Uh, so some jurisdictions have truth in menu laws, and um, the FDA food code includes a provision that requires that food must be honestly presented, meaning that anything that you say about um, any way you describe your food uh, has to actually be true, um, which is seems like a simple <laughs> seems like a simple thing. But um, other jurisdictions have uh, taken this uh, further to kind of build off of this. But it's you know with the way that the food industry is evolving, you know what is what customers like to see now are you know, that you know beef was grass fed or chickens were you know free range or um, a lot of times with um, seafood, you know, certain uh, fish are more, uh, they're more costly than other fish, and a lot of times when you're serving fish as a fillet, it's impossible to determine for a customer what exactly that fish is, and so it's um, easy for a restaurant or, or food truck to, you know, get a very inexpensive fish and try and pass it off as something more expensive. And so any way that you describe your food um, has to be accurate. Um, to satisfy the food code, um, they kind of generally say it has to be honestly presented, and they specifically mention that you can't um, mislead or misinform the consumer by using color additives, colored overwraps, um, or lights in order to kind of distort the true appearance of the food. Um, but other jurisdictions uh, include, you know, more specific requirements as to truth in menu laws. Uh, they require, obviously, if you list the ingredient, it has to be as listed. Um, you don't have to list all of the ingredients, but if you list it, it has to be actually included in the menu item. Um, you have to be accurate with regards to weight and serving size, uh, method of production. Um, I don't know um, how this came about, but at some point, people grilling was very, um, everyone wanted to say something was flame grilled or it was, it was very uh, popular. And somehow, um, I think it was actually food vendors, it wasn't even the restaurants, but food vendors would, you know, sell these chicken breasts that already had the grill marks on them, even if the food hadn't been grilled. And, and so if you say something is grilled, it actually has to be grilled and not just have artificial grill marks added to it. Um, uh, it has to be accurate with respect to the origin of the food. Um, if you say you're losing local ingredients or North Carolina ingredients, it actually has to be from North Carolina or whatever state or area that you say. Um, and if you are advertising any certifications of the food, you know, such as USDA grade A, uh, it actually has to have, uh, you know, that certification. Um, this comes into a play in a lot of cities um, or just any area with a, a concentrated um, maybe orthodox religions, if you're saying something is kosher or if you're saying it's halal, it has to be. Um, you can't just say that in order to pretend that it is. So um, this image is actually um, a photo just kind of to sh what I had mentioned earlier that most people can't identify the correct fish when it's in fillet form. Um, this photo is from Oceana and they use this as an example to kind of show that you really can't tell and it's very easy for restaurants. Um, so, for example, in that first um, line, you know, those are both, you know, could be passed off as cod, but on the left is actually escalar, um, and the next group um, on the left is actually perch. It's not grouper, although they look almost identical. Um, and the next photo, the left is swordfish, and the right is mako shark. Um, and the next photo, the left is red snapper, but the right is rockfish. And then finally, if you, a lot of times people want to see wild salmon instead of farmed, um, the left is actually the farmed salmon and the right is the wild salmon. So it's kind of an example of, it's sometimes very hard to, to tell what you're looking at when you're a consumer. So um, in, in this regard, so example, in Florida, with respect to seafood specifically, um, 
In about 2006, the Attorney General's office began investigating uh, restaurants, literally sending investigators to order seafood, and then they had it DNA tested to see if it really was the seafood that was uh, listed on the menu. Um, and they found many, 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 many instances in which the seafood was incorrectly labeled. And so a lot of restaurant owners you know, were, would try to claim that it was sold to them that way by the vendor. Uh, and Florida passed a law where restaurants are held strictly liable. So it's their responsibility to know what they're looking at. If a vendor tries to sell them, you know, rockfish or grouper, but it's actually rockfish um, or something like that, they have to know what they're looking at to be able to determine. And if it's wrong, it's on them, even if the vendor lied to them. So. Um, we also see um, a lot of issues with nutritional claims. People want to know, um, if something is low fat or low sodium or no trans fats. Um, so in a restaurant, this is, you know, food labeling is more typically important to uh, uh, packaged foods that are for sale uh, in the retail setting. Um, in a restaurant, you're exempt from a lot of your little labeling requirements uh, because food is not presented in that manner. However, if you voluntarily attempt to make one of these claims, um, you A, has to be accurate, and B, you have to be able to provide further information showing the reasonable support for that, um, for that assertion um, in order, if a customer asks, um, you have to be able to back it up. So, um, like I said, you see a lot of things having zero um, cholesterol or low fat or sugar free. Um, so you have to look up, you know, what um, the FDA regulations are for reduced or low or zero uh, and find out, you know, have that food tested. Does it really have what you're claiming it has? So um, you see this a lot with health claims as well. People want to say something is heart healthy or safe for, you know, people with diabetes. Um, so health claims have a little bit um, kind of more to them. Um, if someone asks why have you labeled this heart healthy, you know, you have to be able to explain the significant scientific agreement on what is heart healthy and then relate that general statement to the specific product that you're selling. Um, so an example that the FDA provides um, would be that, you know, three grams of soluble fiber from oatmeal daily in a diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol may reduce the risk of heart disease. This cereal has two grams per serving. So you have the general statement and then the specific statement. Um, finally, also with these two logos that you see on the right-hand side, um, these are actually independent organization logos. So if you use that heart, you do have to be certified by the, I think it's American Heart Association. And then the second one, um, if you are saying it has a low glycemic index, you actually, to use that, uh, logo have to receive certification from the uh, Glycemic Index Foundation. So. You see a lot um, of restaurants, there's a big gluten-free trend. Um, if you're using, uh, if you use that term, uh, it has to contain less than 20 parts per million of gluten. Um, so this is a, a big trend and this is something that you don't have to necessarily scientifically um, or send your food out for testing. Um, if you know that the ingredients if it's, that you've used are gluten-free, you may use it. Uh, but if you've tried to reduce or extract the gluten, um, you do have to have it tested to ensure that it is less than 20 parts per million. Um, anything you label fresh actually has to be um, in its natural state in the sense that it can't be frozen, thermally processed, or preserved. Um, finally, you can identify on your menu which ingredients are organic but you can't say that your whole food truck is organic. Even if you use all organic ingredients, once you've processed the food, um, you lose that certification. Um, so you can identify specific ingredients, but not overall. You can't use that logo, the USDA organic logo, um, even if you might be using all USDA organic uh, ingredients. All right, the UCC Article 2, this comes into play a lot with allergies. Um, obviously, the warranty of merchantability, if, you know, goods must conform to the description and must be fit for ordinary purposes. Obviously, food should be safe to eat. Obviously, that's what food is sold for. Um, but with the implied warranty of fitness for a particular purpose, if a customer tells you that they have a certain allergy, um, you don't have to... Um, navigate it. You can say, I don't think that any of our food is safe for that allergy, but if you do help them navigate it, you have to be able to accurately uh, 
point out a menu item that will satisfy their um, allergic requirements. Um, and this could also be said for if someone uh, keeps halal uh, or kosher, or um, you know, if someone is just a veg is a vegetarian or a vegan. If they ask you for a specific food product to fit a particular purpose, you have to provide an accurate response. Um, kind of a funny instance where this happens a lot in um, in uh, in places, and I think this is why they you know, did chicken, C-H-I-C-K, apostrophe N, um, A, to prevent kind of false labeling claims, but then also to kind of immediately identify to people who work in stores which one is not really chicken. And so if you're selling something as vegan or vegetarian, um, you just got to make sure it's labeled properly and that you're not using fake chicken or um, that you're not using the wrong one. So. Um, Finally, on labeling, the food, food code has specific disclosures that they require you to make. If you're selling um, any raw or undercooked animal food or egg ingredients. So the menu, when it's drafted, has to specifically say that the oysters are raw or that the hamburgers you know, can be cooked to order. Um, and then you have to kind of asterisk those ingredients and at the bottom of the menu provide a statement that reminds uh, customers that consuming raw or undercooked meats, poultry, seafood, shellfish may increase your risk of foodborne illness.